audible right yes yes you're audible students can i request you to switch on your cameras yeah I would like to welcome everyone to the, the session with an interaction with alumni on the topic of careers in finance. I would like to hand it over to Kritika, who will introduce Rashi Rathor. Hi, good evening, everyone uh, present here. It is my pleasure to introduce you to a remarkable individual who has not only excelled in the world of finance, but continues to make waves in this dynamic industry. Rashi Rathor is a shining example of what dedication, education, and hands-on experience can achieve. Rashi is a proud graduate of HR College, holding a bachelor's degree in bachelor's in financial markets. She was also a vice president of BFM committee. Her academic prowess is only the beginning of her journey. With three years of valuable experience in finance, she has proven her mettle in and as a professional. What truly sets Rashi apart is her relentless pursuit of excellence. She is on the path of obtaining the prestigious CFA designation, already having conquered that challenging CFA level two. This commitment, continuous learning speaks volumes about the dedication to staying at the forefront of her field. Currently, Rashi thrives in her role as an investment research analyst. Her expertise lie in various domains, including financial analysis, financial modeling, equity research, and valuation. She navigates databases like Capital IQ, PitchBook with finesse, showcasing her analytical prowess. I would like to thank our principal, Dr. Pooja Ramchandani, for giving us the opportunity due to some prior commitments, she is not available today. And now I would like to hand it over to our teacher in charge, Ms. Shweta Ma'am and Vicky Sir to say a few words. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kritika. Uh, so, uh, such a nice introduction and I'm so happy and glad to have Rashi over here. Uh, who was a uh, student over here three, four years ago and also vice president uh, who handled the, uh, you know, multitasking because I remember the third year when Rashi took over this position of vice president, she was doing her internship as well. And with internship, she managed to get very good scores in her BFM third year overall uh, performance and um, manage the BFM committee too. So uh, I'm so proud of you, Rashi. And then that's the reason we want you to now address to our FY students, uh, you know, inspire them. I'm sure they will be very motivated to hear you because your journey had been really great. Uh, and uh, definitely you are doing your CFA and uh, uh, aspiring for level three too. So all the very best to you. And uh, over to you without uh, taking too much of time. I think all the students are really eager to hear you. So, uh, over to you for the session. Yes. Thank you, ma'am, for such a great introduction. I mean, to all you students also coming on a Saturday, especially it's like basically everybody wants to chill on a Saturday and everybody's here attending this session. So it's like a really, really good thing. So let's begin. I'll give you like a brief, already everybody's introduced me, but I'll just give a brief introduction about myself as well. So, yeah, like you said, I graduated HR in, back in 2021. Uh, you can call me the COVID batch. <laughs> we had like one and a half year in COVID. So we were at home, but whatever one year, one and a half year we were in college, it was a great time. Like, you know, I did bachelor's in financial markets. And then along with DFM, I also was pursuing CFA, like right from, I think, first, second year of college. And... I gave my level one, I think back in 2021. And then I started right fresh out of college. I After graduation, I started working. Yes, I, start, I work as an equity research analyst at Sykes Sunday Equity. Um, what we did over there was work on a lot of fundamental analysis and then making research reports, working on various Perfect. companies yeah. on in the stock market. And then... I moved on like after a year or so working over, over there, I moved on and uh, I started working in a startup called Northstar Analytics where basically I do investment research analysis. Uh, 
essentially around financial modeling, valuations, um, working on pitch decks, doing financial analysis of a lot of private companies, basically a lot of startups. And then right now, that's what I'm doing. I've been doing that for more than one and a half year now. And it's been really good. I've learned a lot about it, like how the entire industry of finance works and uh, what exactly you need to know in finance and all of that. So if we can, I think I can share my screen, we can start the session and I will basically in this session introduce you to all the things that you can learn in during your three years of DFM, what you can do during your, during studying with DFM and then obviously what you can do after you graduate, how you can navigate through your three years of degree college as well as how you can, you know, move forward after degree college, what you can do later on. So I think I can share my screen. Uh, yes, uh, you can. Uh, Pranav, uh, can we please uh, give rights to uh, Rashi for share yeah, screen? I think I can. Yes. Okay. So students, just to add on over here, uh, as Rashi is uh, sharing her screen, uh, this is our very much first uh, lecture series. Uh, so Rashi, we have started with interaction with the alumni, and uh, this is the first session, what we are having starting with you. And then every week we are planning to have an interaction of uh, BFM students to their alumni. Uh, so all the specific and requisite uh, you know, skills, what they should be knowing when they are doing currently BFM, with BFM and side by side BFM and how to excel in this field, uh, we would be having this session. So I would say it's like a kind of an inaugural session for today where we are having this uh, webinar. So, so happy to have you over here. And let's start with the, let's talk about now the webinar. Okay. okay. Thank you yeah. so much. Ma. Yes, let's begin. So what is basically navigating through finance? So I'm sure since you are in your first year, you might be a little lost as to what is happening around you. You chose BFM, but I'm sure you didn't have a lot of knowledge once you entered BFM. Like, I'm sure like college must have started like maybe two, three months back. So it's fairly new to everybody what the world of finance is. I'm sure you are trying to navigate to understand what actually finance is all about, what things you can study, what you can actually do with finance. So that's what we will do in this session. I'll give you like a very brief, understanding of what you can do during your three years and then later on after you are done with your graduation. So let's begin and we can do a small Q&A session after I am done so that if you have any doubts, we can address those doubts. I'm sure further also you will have a lot of doubts, but I think I will try to clear as much doubt as possible because I was as well in your seat like four or five years back thinking of the same things, wanting to know what it was all about. And obviously, at that time, we didn't have a lot of experience and a lot of guidance. But yes, HR was one of the few colleges that gave you that exposure to understand what you can actually do through all these webinars, seminars in college. Since obviously, in our first year, we were in college physically. And now again, you have that chance to be in college and understand what you can do physically. So that is like a, the greatest opportunity that you can have. So I'm sure you should make like the most out of it. So let's begin. First, I would like to talk about what you can do to enhance your degree college experience. I'm sure once you entered HR, you must have had like dreams and a lot of aspirations as to what, what you can do, achieve out of HR, how you can maximize your entire degree college experience for the next three years. That's when you should know now that what you can do, firstly, along with academics, is now you have the chance, since HR offers you like a lot of elective subjects in your second and third year to understand what are your interests, where your interests lie. First thing you should do is always try to explore what your syllabus is. Understand what they are trying to teach you. Understand where your interests lie in the entire financial market. Obviously, you will have a number of subjects that you can choose from and some will be a compulsion to follow and some will be electives where you can understand or choose it between what you like, what you don't like. That's what I would suggest. Always 
understand what the ask your teachers ask who is the visiting faculty or the permanent teachers obviously shweta ma'am is there to guide you tell you what the those subjects entail and what they can help you later on achieve i think that's the most important thing because along with academics there are a lot of other aspects to your degree college experience but that is where a lot of experience will also a lot of information will also come from so obviously when you are start starting off understand what subjects you can take up what will your interests be in and try to explore as much as possible so i don't understand what each subject is trying to tell you because everything in finance finance is a very vast field it has a lot of aspects to it and obviously in it's a little difficult to navigate to every part of it but yes in those three years you will get in a lot of knowledge about what each subject will actually teach you but along with obviously academics you should always always take a little bit of effort to be in extra curricular i think hr is one of the very few colleges that offers a wide range of extra curricular activities i think shweta ma'am will agree in these three years you will have a lot of potential like a lot of opportunities to take part in a lot of extra curricular activities right from a lot of clubs events and a lot of activities for example there are like you have your bfm committee that right? we all even when we were in the bfm committee we tried to organize a lot of events for students like you all in the first second third year so that what you can do is gain a lot a bit of practical knowledge along with the academic knowledge that you will gain in the next three years that's what you should do take a part take part in a lot of clubs since you can now go to college offline physically you can actually gain that experience meet new people in your college and not only from bfm obviously from other e courses as well as your seniors try to gain as much exposure to a lot of extra curricular activities that are available and offered in hr and don't even don't just limit yourself to like hr for that matter go explore and meet new people from different colleges that's what it's all about like enhancing your skills your soft skills for that matter through communication network building and that i think hr will help you because you can take part in part of a lot of extra curricular activities like that and along with that i think what you can focus on in hr and in general is gaining a lot of practical experience for that matter and by practical experience what i mean is that you can take up a lot of internships i know it's a little difficult when we just say like everybody tells you you should do internships in your second year or third year of college and i know it's a little difficult to get into a lot of internships but right now since after covid it has become it's the amount of opportunities available the amount of people requiring students like you are increased immensely what you can do is look for internships try to explore where your interests lie in finance for example if you like equity markets or if you like for example fixed income for example if you like bonds or anything if you are like having a little bit of interest in financial analysis what you can do is look for internships that can help you enhance your knowledge give, give you a little bit of practical experience that you will not entirely gain from your academics and i think the best way or one of the best ways to gain that knowledge is going through linkedin building your network talking to people on linkedin i think linkedin is one of the most like the best one of the best places that you can actually gain that knowledge from because i think personally even i have lot of opportunities come from linkedin as well so during your first not first year first year you can keep to like understand what is happening around you meet new people but second third year is when you can start gaining a little bit of practical knowledge go to and i'm sure shweta ma'am will obviously let you do internships in college as well along with your college so i think you can go and go around and do a little bit of internship for example actually, actually they are allowed to take internships uh, with respect also that they attend their lectures so yes, that is mandatory <laughs> Okay. Because I'm sure that even when we were in college, HR also used to provide a lot of opportunities to do internships. 
and i'm sure shweta ma'am will soon have an internship drive for you all <laughs> for you to you know explore those areas learn as much as possible and try to gain as much as exposure for example if you don't understand a particular field for example you have an interest in equity research and you want to know what it is the best way to know other than obviously going through textbooks is to go for an internship to learn how they are actually working in real life because one thing we don't understand is usually we understand a little later is that only studying through books is not going to give you the practical knowledge that actually happens around in the real world because after 3 years you will also understand that what you studied in school or what what you studied in college plus that practical knowledge is the only thing that is going to keep you alive in this cutthroat world of finance so that's what you should do try to gain as much practical knowledge and i'm sure hr is one of the few colleges that is allowing students to do that through these internships through these extra curricular activities and as well as along with these practical exp- exposures one thing that you can also start planning in your 3 years of degree college is if you want to take up any new professional course for example now there are a lot of opportunities for uh, university students to explore different professional courses i mean today we can talk about a few of them i will list down a few of them so that you if you are new to them you can understand what they are what happens in that what you are ex- what you can study through that what you can learn in those particular courses so to list few of these ex- professional courses would be i'm sure a lot of you must be familiar with cfa uh, chartered financial analyst so one of the few courses that a lot of finance students want to go for is cfa which has like three levels and you have to clear one good thing that cfa institute started recently was that now you can actually start studying for cfa right from your first or second year of college and you can once you graduate you probably have like two levels in your bag and then you can go out and explore the world of finance as well as have a cfa in like the next one year of graduation which is like one of the best things possible for a graduate because that gives you an immense amount of opportunity along with cfa there are a lot of other financial courses that you can take up for example you have FRM, which is financial risk management, which you can, for example, take up as well. We will talk in a little bit brief about all of these financial courses as well, so that you know if you have any doubts, then you can obviously ask questions later on regarding each course. Or you can take up, for example, CMT, which is students who have like a lot of interest in technical analysis, studying the charts and then making trades based on it, can go for like certified market technician. and there are a lot of other courses like cwm which is like certified wealth management a lot of these entail or explore different financial subjects like i'm sure you will come across money markets debt markets equity markets and i'm sure you will want to explore what these actually mean and a lot of financial courses along with your three years of degree college help you navigate through them understand better the world of finance and understand better what or where your interest will lie eventually so that's what you should do enhance your degree college experience through all of these things and that's what you do but the most important thing out of all of this is building your network i don't think people emphasize this more but building your network is the most important thing that can happen in these three years of college because you are meeting people who will eventually go on to become like ceo cfo of a lot of big companies and this is what this is where you can actually build your network understand meet a lot of new people understand where their interests lie gain from their experience and i'm not only talking about your batchmates but your seniors as well because they have already experienced what you are just starting with so they can actually guide you make you understand what can actually help you in navigating through these three years and that's what you should do build your network go to different clubs join different clubs hr is i think one of the very few colleges that has a lot of clubs like i don't even remember but there were like more than 20 clubs 
while we were in degree college and every year there was a particular cause and we used to start a new club for that particular cause so that people are gaining exposure to what is out there and i think hr is one of the few colleges that is offering that and i think it's one of, and that helps you with one of the best things that is management time management because you have to obviously dangle between your college exams and assignments and plus get into these different clubs organize these different events and gaining exposure participating i mean not only organizing but participating through these different clubs was immensely immensely beneficial for me for that matter and i'm sure even you will realize that once you are being going to be a part of a club and that's what i would suggest like you should at least take up one or two clubs so that you know what actually go- is going to happen how you can develop your soft skills of communication team building leadership and extra curricular is one of the best ways to explore that and hr offers you that so obviously like grab on that opportunity as soon as possible so that you know what you can do with the skills that you can build um now what we can talk about is basically what you can do after your 3 years of degree college because everybody has a clue but is also a little clueless about what can be done later on after you finish your 3 years of degree college everybody is in the pathway of should we actually go for directly working or we should actually go and do a masters or an mba so that's what we can talk about what can work for you and it's a very subjective thing everybody after after degree college has a different ambition has a different goal in life and you should not always think that okay what my friend would be doing maybe that will work out best for me because usually it doesn't work that way what you can do is try to understand that your interests lie and that's what we can talk about there are a lot of avenues that you can take up for example after degree college what you can think of is one of the few things is going for a masters or going for an mba and obviously there are a lot of opportunities in india and outside india that we want to explore for a masters but what we don't understand is what we can do a masters in or if we should if mba is the right choice for us or not because you have to obviously prepare for a bunch of exams like gmat cat and obviously a lot of other exams like for example gre if you want to be in india or outside india so what you should do is understand where your interests lie if you feel that studying further is something that you have an interest in obviously go for that because a lot of mba colleges in india or outside india demand students who excel in a lot of aspects and that is not only academically but in a lot of extracurricular activities as well and that is one of the criteria of a lot of mba colleges in india or outside india and that's what makes it a little difficult for a lot of students to get into good mba colleges because sometimes we just don't understand that only academics is not going to help us the practical experience that we need is also something that these mba colleges are looking for because eventually the main agenda of an mba college is to help you build a network help you understand eventually how you can come up with your own ideas build a business on your own that's what mba is all about building your network understanding how everybody in this world is thinking of what new ideas you can come up with how you can actually uplift the entire world along with you and that's what mba is basically all about obviously you will learn a lot of new things academically and personally professionally but that's what mba will help and if you think that mba is something that you want to study further and then eventually start working in this in finance then you should go for that or what you can do is after 3 years of degree college you can directly start working and hr offers you after your three, in your third year for that matter you will be offered or you will be sitting for interviews where you will be obviously a number of companies will come and you will have to do interviews and you can before even giving your final exam you will 
probably have a job in your hand and uh, that's what is that's what something you want to do in life then you should go for that and now let's talk about lot of, what are the different fields you can get into if you think of gaining experience working firstly there are finance is a very vast field there are a lot of career paths that you can choose to be in there are a lot of financial roles that are available out there and we will try to cover a few so that you understand eventually how if you choose to work after 3 years what role can work for you what will be your interest so a few that you might already know or would be familiar with is for example equity research equity research is all about equity markets how the stock market works and in that what you can do is become or be a equity research analyst where for, for example you will be learning a lot about financial analysis or understanding how a company works how the company on a stock market is working what is happening in the company how that business is navigating in that particular industry a lot of financial analysis financial modeling understanding for example how you can actually learn how to invest in a company and obviously that is one of the roles that you can take up or you can have for example investment bank a lot of us have heard about investment banking but don't actually understand what an investment banker does and that's what that's what happens and then we don't have a clue we get into a job like that and we don't understand what actually is investment banking and then the scary word of investment banking just shocks us but yeah investment banking is all about for example and there are a lot of paths to investment banking you can become you can get into mergers and acquisitions for example when two companies want to come together or you want to take a new take up a company that's what mergers and acquisitions is an investment banker what that is, what uh, in what an investment banker essentially does is help that help you close that deal and quite frankly if you are in your first year of investment banking if you are an investment banking analyst what your role would be to actually understand what that company is doing a lot of investment bankers are obviously making deals with a lot of startups and you what your role would be to understand how that company is working is that company a good fit for your company or not if you should for example understand how that what is the company doing in valuations and analysis basically understanding what the company will be eventually if you put your money into that company and a lot of investment bankers first your investment bank or second your investment bankers do that because obviously closing a deal is not something we would be getting to do in like a first year right out of college right so i mean that's what investment banking will be for like first year second year investment bankers and then or you can take up for example lot of roles available in risk analysis or for example quantitative analysis where all you will do is for example analyze how a company is managing risks not only in like stock markets but a company wide risk for example for a corporate how can you manage those risks and quantitative analysis would be for example how you can use different algorithms to trade in the market and understand how the how the market is actually working how these stocks are going up and down that's what you will understand so there are a lot of core financial roles that are available in the market and that you can explore but before you start doing that understand where your interests lie and it's completely fine to start with something and eventually realize that that is not something you would have enjoyed doing and what you can do is it's okay you can just quit that feel like that is something that's not working out for you and explore something new because finance is one of the one of the vast like fields where you can explore so much and still have a lot more to explore and obviously that is something which is a little scary but again if you find your interest i think it's one of the best places obviously because a lot of us eventually want to earn a lot of money and that's what a lot of people's goals are in life as well to earn so much money and i think what we don't understand is 
not only earning money is very important but obviously gaining that satisfaction understanding what our passion is eventually is also more important as well so i think again what you should do is understand what your interests are you are in your first year you might be a little clueless right now but as you navigate through your second third year you will realize okay maybe this is something i will like this is something that interests me and talk to people understand what people are also doing obviously you cannot just do a copy paste but you can understand what they are doing what their struggles were when they were in college obviously when i was in first year i was exactly where you are right now a little clueless because everybody is just are is in financial markets but we don't actually know how what we will do later on and it's completely fine you can explore right now and then eventually understand what is going to happen and it's completely fine to go wrong and then think oh maybe this will not work out for me and just take up something else for that matter and i'm sure that a lot of your college teachers are there to guide you a lot of teachers all have a lot of experience professionally as well as academically and um, they are always there to guide you so i mean if you need guidance from me as well since i have gone through everything that you will go through eventually so obviously it is oh, i am always available for a chat or you can call me or text me anything that is fine but yeah what if what i would suggest is take these three years try to explore or understand how much ever you can about this field because it genuinely will take a little bit of time to understand what you can actually do but yeah i think that's what you should do and if you have any question ever you can just ping me and i will always be available to help you as well so i think if you have any questions right now about anything in particular that you would want to know we can talk about i think that would be more interactive than me just talking to you and you just listening because i think interactive sessions are more important than just anybody talking on zoom because even we were in college and we used to obviously always have like when will they stop talking and when will we be able to ask questions so that we get our doubts cleared so i think that would be more fruitful for you as well so i think we can do a q and a if everybody has a few questions so students you can raise your hand you can unmute yourself yeah, sure. you can ask uh, questions everyone you are open to question and yeah. answers you can yeah and you can just and unmute you can also yourself and ask the question yeah or you can put it in the chat box i think whatever works for you yes nayan you can go ahead what's the major difference between cmt course and the cfa course okay so cfa is cfa is more about financial analysis basically a lot of fundamental analysis where you are obviously there are 10 subject that you have to go through and they will focus more on how to understand a company fundamentally what i mean by that would be how to do how to understand the ins and outs of a company through fundamentals for example understanding what the industry is what is happening in that industry what is happening in that particular company more so cmt which is technical analysis this is a lot on what is actually happening in the live markets for example i'm sure you must have already come across this word of stock markets and trading and all of that and you must understand how these charts work and that's what te technical analysis is more about understanding those charts how to build a strategy based on those charts and based on technical aspects of the market more so fundamental analysis cfa for that matter will teach you how to and it's not only based on fundamental analysis there are a lot of avenues for example a lot of subjects in cfa that are covered are you have equity markets you have fixed income which is your debt markets like bonds and all of that plus you can have corporate finance which is portfolio management where you portfolio management essentially will be where you will be given a lot of money and you are told to now manage that money how will you manage that money that's what portfolio management will be like for example you will have to come up with strategies based on companies that are available in the stock market and otherwise private companies as well private equity is where which focuses cfa focuses a bit on 
derivatives markets for example i'm sure you must know words like options and futures that you come across on the stock market where you understand how to navigate through all of that cfa is more based on based on that where cmt will obviously teach you a lot more about technical analysis where cfa doesn't cover a lot of technical analysis it has a few brief touch points but cmt is more about technical analysis understanding and obviously a brief of all of this will be available in your syllabus of bfm in the next 3 years you will come across all of these subjects where you will understand what is technical analysis what is fundamental analysis what is portfolio management corporate finance and all of that so i think once you understand or go through your 3 years of college obviously you can start studying for cmt and cfa while you are in your 3 years of college so that will also give you a lot of understanding on what happens eventually in those two courses I think there is a question in the chat box. Oh, I think somebody has asked the question. Do you think masters in portfolio management is a right choice after BFM? Again, depends. There are a lot of things you can do a masters in. You can do a masters in, for example, quantitative analysis. You can do a masters in financial analytics. there are a lot of avenues that you can do a masters in and masters is quite different compared to what an mba is because mba covers the broad aspect of business administration which will obviously teach you how to handle a business how to grow a business as well as what are the financial aspects of a business again but it's completely your choice if you want to go ahead and do a masters in any subject for that matter not only portfolio management but in any subject and obviously there are a lot of niche subjects available where you can do a masters in and they will give you a lot of exposure to that particular field for example yes if you choose to do a portfolio management masters you will get a lot of experience into portfolio management but personally i feel nothing can beat a hands on experience in the live real life market like obviously academics will help you get into it but eventually when you are working that's where you gain the most amount of knowledge because sometimes we what we don't understand is what we are learning in the textbook sometimes it's not actually what we apply in real life you will learn a particular thing in college and you will realize eventually that the actual job is asking you to do something completely different and obviously then we think that what was the point of studying but that studying part was the building block that eventually helped you realize that how you can go through these different aspects of your job so yeah if you want to go ahead and do a masters that is completely fine on you and obviously masters is for like 18 months to 24 months two years max and then you can start working so it's not like it's going to take up a lot of your time but yes it's an investment that you have to make so it's very important to think and navigate through it before that of making that decision because doing a masters is not exactly cheap it's an it's an investment okay so if you think that that is something that will help you better understand a particular subject or a particular field that you want to explore go ahead for a masters instead of just directly starting a job and lot of mba colleges masters require you to have a little bit of experience and obviously that helps a lot gives you an the knowledge that obviously a college will not be able to give i think the next question how important is maths in cfa i mean it's not going to be hardcore maths but what you study now in these 3 years in college is something which is sufficient and you don't have to actually in school the maths that we used to do which was trigo and geometry and all of that i don't think we have ever going, we are ever going to use that right and it's the same thing 
in finance when you are working everything is done on an excel you don't even have to pick up your calculator excel actually does everything for you all you need to know is how to use excel and so eventually yes while studying cfa obviously you will have to use a calculator you will but it will help you it's not very difficult maths it's just the basic maths that you use in everyday life in college obviously three years whatever maths you will use that's what it will be and you don't have to worry about if you are not that great at maths it's okay you can still do cfa because eventually after you are done with cfa you are going to work on excel is i think the next question is is cfa better or cfa plus frm or for example yeah cfa again is cfa better or cfa plus frm cfa and frm are kind of different things but have a lot of overlap in between obviously a lot of subjects that, that are taught to you in cfa are overlapping with frm but again they are two completely different things frm focuses more on risk analysis risk management and if for example you want to get into understanding how to do a lot of risk analysis for example understanding um quantitative analysis building algorithms and all of that frm would be a greater choice for you than cfa but yes i know a lot of people personally who have pursued both cfa and frm what you have to understand in these financial courses are that it's not only time consuming but it's an investment so try to always see what is a better fit for you compared to what will be more beneficial in general for a lot of other people because what works for you might not work for them and what works for them might not work for you so eventually once you go through first thing when you decide if you want to go for a financial course is always see, see the syllabus understand what is actually happening in that what are they going to offer you and if that's something that interests you excites you for that matter then you should go for it so always frm gets a lot easy when you already know cfa or you have cleared all three levels of cfa because frm has two levels level 1 and level 2 and there is a lot of overlap so but again it's an investment and the job profiles for cfa for a person who is doing cfa or who wants to do frm eventually are a little different so once you go through understand what is actually taught in each course you will understand what the difference will be there is a question can you explain the process of getting an internship and what internships you did did you do any certification courses for it if so which one okay so getting internships it's a little difficult i get it but what you can do is hr one hr is one of the great avenues that you can look for an internship at but obviously we are i'm sure you are a batch of 100 plus students and not everybody can get an internship from college because but again it's not restricting only to college you can go through linkedin there are a lot of websites and places that you can get internships from go on linkedin if you for example know a particular company that you want to do an internship in for example you want to do equity research and then you come across a company that is doing equity research talk to the people from that company message them on linkedin ask them what if they are willing to offer an internship and a lot of companies do offer internships to students if you show an interest and if if it's possible a lot of startups for that matter have a lot of opportunity for students like you who can do internships over there so go through in go through linkedin and try to actually understand where you can linkedin offers a lot of internships we think in linkedin is only for jobs but yeah no a lot of internships are available on linkedin and you should explore them did you do any certification courses so what i would suggest is first year second year you can do certification courses but what the certification courses what you should be doing for eventually after 3 years is how to use excel how to use powerpoint i think these are the two tools or two places that require a lot of attention of a finance financial analyst and how to learn excel 
what you can do is you don't necessarily have to do a certification course simple plain youtube youtube is one of the few places that has everything available you don't need to pay anything and you can gain a lot of knowledge from youtube learn financial modeling from youtube you can learn valuations from youtube youtube for example you can if you want to do fundamental analysis you want to write a research report how would you do it even you wouldn't know right youtube trust me youtube has a lot of lot of information that we pay a lot of money to do but eventually it's all free and available to us if you want to do any certification courses understand how to use an excel how to use powerpoint what are the different shortcuts that you can use how you can become more efficient using these different microsoft office tools that's what that's the skill that a lot of people eventually require you to have even when you go for interviews they will not directly ask you do you know excel do you know powerpoint but they will try to understand through the questions that they ask do you have that kind of knowledge do you have those particular soft and hard skills to navigate to whatever roles that is available so always make sure certification courses are obviously available you can do a lot from like for example lot of avenues like you have edx you have udemy and a lot of other websites and courses that are available out there but yes again you can gain all of that knowledge from youtube as well so if you want to do that you should i mean building soft skills is important but also having these skills more is also important so obviously do that then i think when can i start cmt i think you can start cmt right after your second year of college and um, obviously doing cmt if you have a if you have an interest in technical analysis it's a great way to understand how you can learn more about technical analysis and that's what you should do if you feel like cmt will help you i so you should if you feel the offering you you will get and again if you want to learn technical analysis what you can do is again take up a few certification courses if there are some available and there are a lot of certification courses available but more than that what you can do is understand start small obviously we are students you are students but uh, even i am a student but yeah like start small you can actually start trading and understand what is actually going to apply the technical analysis knowledge that you learn from the books and mistakes can happen but obviously once you try you will realize you will get better at it and cmt will obviously be an add on to it and help you understand how to actually be a professional with technical analysis so yeah i think there was one more question talking about study plan for cfa level 1 and what can we do or how to study again cfa has 10 subjects so first thing that you can obviously do is go through that reading understand what each subject is talking about and i know we feel that once we read something 10 days later we forgot what we did and it's quite natural and it happens with everybody happened with me as well when i was doing cfa it's not like i studied something and like 10 days later i was able to retain it as well it's not like that but yeah once you study everything what is available you can again revise it and once you start revising one of the key things that you can do while studying for cfa is practice there are a lot of practice questions available on the cfa institute and otherwise and that's what you should do because going through cfa you will realize that only studying from the book is not enough but obviously doing those practice questions giving those mock exams is something that is very helpful eventually and uh, again cfa is better or cfp cfp if everybody doesn't know it's financial planning again they are very different 
CFA is obviously a global course. So, again, but it doesn't matter. It gives you a lot of knowledge which you can apply to Indian markets as well. So, it's not like you cannot do that. And CFP is more based on financial planning when they are different in their own aspects. Financial planning will obviously help you understand how to build your own financial plan, how to actually where to put your investments in if one avenue is better than the other for you or for your client for that matter because that's what you eventually might do that for yourself and for other people. That's So it completely depends if you want to eventually get into financial planning, become a financial advisor, you can go for CFP. And if you want to gain an overall aspect of every bit of finance, you can go for CFA. Because CFA actually covers a lot of financial topics that are available out there. So that's what you should do. Again, go through the syllabus, understand what you will like eventually, and then make a decision. Because you can't keep switching on from one sub from one course to another because it's an investment. But yeah. Do we have any other questions? Then we can take up. CFP offers better understanding for Indian markets. Yes, it does, obviously, because CFP is more based in India and it will help you understand a lot about the financial markets in India. And you can, again, you can do it for your own knowledge purpose. Yes, a lot of these courses you can eventually take up just because you want to gain that knowledge. We only give those exams because we want to know if we are proficient in them or not and eventually want to make a career out of it or not. But yes, if you want to do it for your own personal experience, that is, you can do that. Obviously, nobody will stop you. So, yeah. Do we have any other questions? Yeah. What are the different roles within the finance industry and which one aligns with our course? Sorry, can you repeat? I'm so sorry, I couldn't. Yeah. What are the different roles within the finance industry and which one aligns with our VFM course? Oh, so first, for example, you can get into equity research. Equity research analysis is where you, if you're doing it in India, you will focus a lot on Indian equity markets. You will learn about the stock markets, what you can actually do. A lot of companies, for example, you have a lot of brokerage firms that are there. IIFL, for that matter, Motilal Oswal, all of these companies offer a lot of roles in equity research. So you can get into equity research analysis. Then you can also get into investment banking. Again, a lot of, for example, investment banks in India can be like you have PwC, you have a lot of small boutique investment banks as well. It's not that you have to get into a big investment bank only, but you can also get into these small boutique investment banks where you can gain a lot of knowledge. There, you will focus more on how to navigate through a merger or an acquisition, for that matter, how you can invest in a company, what builds a company, what your job as a first-year investment banker or second-year investment banker would be, for example, doing analysis of a company, due diligence on a company, understanding how that company is working, if that company is a good fit for your client or not. That's what an investment banker eventually does, closes the deal. That's what we always hear, right? That that investment banker closed the deal. So yeah, that's what that due diligence part is. Then you can get into private equity. Private equity is again where you want to invest in a private company, a startup for that matter. We hear a lot of times, right? For example, Blackstone invested in a particular private company, Black or for example, a lot of soft bank invested in a company. So a lot of Indian investors, like for example, Swiggy has a lot of investors. And yeah, so what? Who are who is investing in those companies? Right, a private equity firm is investing in those companies. So you will obviously be again a lot of first year analyst jobs are evolve revolve around the same thing. You understand how to value a company, financial analysis, understand, and that's what a first year analyst will always do. It a lot of financial finance roles revolve around the same thing in the first year. 
but yeah there are a lot of for example you can get into investment banking but in the financial analysis zone where for example you will actually plan your company's financial plan how that company will be working what are the expenses of going to be for that company next how the company is going to survive in that next year so there are a lot of roles available you can get into portfolio management again portfolio management will be where you will be the first year analyst and you will be asked to obviously understand how that company if that company is a good fit for your portfolio or not and doing that analysis so a lot of first year analyst jobs revolve around the same job profile only thing is that, that they have different names but yeah eventually when you grow in that particular field for example if you are growing in an investment banking field after 4 5 years you will realize that eventually you are that person making that call whether you should invest in that company or not somebody else is doing the analysis for you and you are making that decision that yes this company is a good fit for us or not so yeah but first year you will learn a lot about how to do this analysis how that business is actually working and if you have that chance you can obviously in these three years try to understand if not through an internship if that's not an option you can obviously do it on your own see how to write any research report understand how the business of a particular company is working and then there are a lot of places for example youtube where you can actually learn how to do how to write a research report and even on linkedin a lot of people keep posting their financial models their financial research reports and you can go through them understand obviously on day one you will not be able to write an entire research report on your own but you will understand what is actually going to be a part of that research report eventually in 3 years maybe you will be able to write a research report even better than those people so it's not like that something is not possible it is possible you just have to obviously keep practicing and yeah thank you so much one more question from my side last yes. question how does the job market look for finance professionals in the current economic climate quite frankly you can get into roles yes sometimes it will be a little difficult and you might not get the like a particular role that you eventually wanted but it doesn't mean that if you don't keep trying you won't get it like yes lot of companies are laying off people and they are not taking a lot of new people but yes it's a very vast field and if there's not one company available there is another company available for that same exact role and you might have to wait a little bit but eventually you will get into one of the roles and yes hr placements help a lot of other if you start looking early on that's what i would suggest start if you are planning to work right out of college after graduation start building on those skills right from first second year so that eventually after 3 years when you make your resume you realize you have a lot of things in your bag a lot of practical and academic knowledge and yes preparing for an interview is more important as well like for example sometimes a lot of people when they are hiring freshers they are not looking for a lot of skills but they are looking for a drive to learn that's what they are hiring those freshers for right because obviously they also know that you don't have a lot of experience but if you have a drive to learn and if you are able to show that your ambition is lying in what they are offering then obviously yes you will get into a particular role that you want to but always keep your options open and give as many interviews as you can apply for as many companies as you can but obviously make sure that the role that you are applying for is not very random because if you land that job and you are taking that job up and you realize after working for 2 3 months that it is not something you are eventually planning on doing then you are kind of stuck in that place so always make sure that whatever roles that you are applying for eventually in the next 3 years or even during internships make sure that is something that aligns with your interest so that you know exactly what is going to come out of that job and obviously interview are a place where you can ask those questions and always don't be shy to ask what they actually will offer to you because you are a value add to them and they are a value add to you as well because obviously 
you want to achieve something in life and that is one of the places that will help you grow so always make sure that they are not the only ones gaining something from you but you are also gaining something from them and that's what the most important part is because obviously we all want to earn but there is something called as growth that we need because if we are stuck in that particular place we will eventually get bored and want to get out of that particular role so it's always better to see where you can get a lot of growth and opportunities from and that's what you should aim for when you are looking for a job as well okay thank you no problem guys do we have more questions you can raise your hands so type it in the chat box and all of you all if you all have any questions to go on after this like after this session i mean you can text me or you can like ping me on linkedin for that matter anywhere and i am always available i'm sure shweta ma'am if she want she can also give you my contact and you can contact me if you want and we can talk on call as well it's fine completely fine like because i know the for that matter that where you are right now we were at the same place 4 5 years back and it is a little scary and it's okay it will eventually be okay so yeah if you have any doubts later on after this session i am always free and i just not saying it for saying the things but yeah i mean it because i know how it feels eventually so yeah yeah okay guys as uh, we don't have many more questions uh, i request you all to on your cameras we need to click a picture everyone please on your cameras Okay. So, uh, can I say something, uh, Karishma? Yes, yes, sure, ma'am. Okay, fine. So, Rashi, thank you so much for the wonderful session. I mean, uh, it was so great to see you, like. Uh, making the students fi students very comfortable because uh, i am not very sure that you know when you yeah. had joined that time so we tried to make you comfortable that time too but uh, you know having a session and talking to them that if they have any queries they can reach out to you and uh, especially the direct questions what they asked about cfa and what is better and uh, how to go about it how to do the preparation i'm sure uh, it was a very enriching uh, session for them uh, so Uh, very happy to have you and then we keep on uh, uh, you know having these kind of a sessions and very soon i'm trying to have a meet of uh, alumni where we'll be calling all the uh, etcetera right of bfms uh, you know especially where these students can directly interact and a kind of a forum uh, where they have uh, you know coaching or a mentoring by you all uh, alumni so that would be uh, really great and i'm looking forward for that forum to start with right so over to you karishma yes ma'am ma'am can can you just on your camera Yeah, done. I would like to formally thank to Ms. Rachi Rato for en engaging with the students and guiding them in the very well mannered way. Thank you on the behalf of all our students, and thank you on the behalf of the BFM Committee of HR College. Definitely, I think I thank you all for attending. 
because yeah i mean it's a saturday so yes But uh, we have all uh, the alumni available only on Saturdays. <laughs> That's oh, the yeah. easiest. <laughs> I I wish I could call all of you on the any other day, but uh, considering that Saturday is the only day available, uh, at least we are at peace, and uh, you know they can attend. So I'm sure uh, it's their their benefit only if they come and uh, learn and attend these sessions. So it's it's. Uh, Uh, you know, uh, their benefit, or they will be getting such enriching uh, experience and knowledge. So, uh, great yeah. session! Thank you so much again, Rashi. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Sure. I I hope that it was enriching for you because it was great oh, for definitely. me to talk to you guys. So yeah, I hope.